Most just want to study, but some, as we have learned from the World Trade Center attacks, have more evil plans. How do so many illegal immigrants slip through the cracks? Is there a way to monitor them more closely? Well, Lynn Schur has a very disturbing investigation that may have you talking back to your TV. We'll call him Omar and tell you only that he's somewhere in the Midwest. Omar doesn't want anyone to know who or where he really is. My visa expired in 97. So how come he's still living here? When Omar flunked out of college invalidating his student visa, he was supposed to leave the country and go back home to Bangladesh. Trouble is, no one forced him out. No, I didn't get any contact from anyone, not from the school or not from the government agency. Omar wasn't exactly on the run. In fact, he didn't change anything to elude government sleuths. If someone wanted to find me, yes, it's very easy to find me. I was in the same place. 36 cents change. Thank you. Omar, Thank you. as far as we know, is not a terrorist. Nor are most of the half million other foreign students in the United States. But two of the 19 hijackers on September 11th were here on student visas. And one of them was expired. Do you want to say anything about what happened? No, 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 no comment. And less than two weeks ago, this man, carrying seven knives and a stun gun, slipped through a checkpoint at O'Hare Airport and was stopped just before he boarded the plane in a random search. It was all the mistake, yes. He, too, is here on a student visa that had expired nearly two years ago. How many foreign students are in the United States today with expired visas? The Immigration and Naturalization Service doesn't have a precise number to that question. And that's the problem. INS has no idea whose visas have expired, or even whether students are registered at the schools that sponsored them. I showed Jackie Bednars from the INS Policy Office a stack of entry forms not normally made public that 2020 had obtained. These are students who applied for visas, got their visas, came in, there's your stamp, right? Got into the United States. Not one of these individuals showed up at the school that he or she was supposed to go to. How do you explain to people, given there's all these untracked people, that you're on top of things? You just entered our paper world. We're expecting the schools to collect information and report to us when we require reporting in a paper world. That's not today. It's not workable. We can't manage that information. And that can be disastrous. Iyad Ishmoel, a 21-year-old Jordanian, is the man who drove the truckload of explosives into the World Trade Center in 1993. Three years earlier, he had dropped out of Wichita State University, but stayed in America undetected on his expired student visa. We have known since 1993, at least 1993, that the foreign student visa program was a threat to national security. Dan Stein runs the Federation for American Immigration Reform. We had studies, we had reports, we had intelligence agencies telling us over and over again that the foreign student visa program was a threat to national security because it was so loosely administered and nobody knew what was going on. So in 1996, Congress ordered INS to come up with a way of keeping tabs on foreign students. The Immigration Service and the State Department were going to have biometric identifiers, fingerprints and, and other biometrics issued on a smart, what's called a smart card, high-tech visa. In other words, it would be used. In other words, if I'm a foreign student, I would have had to get my fingers printed, right. maybe eyeballs, whatever, and something would be on a card that I would have to carry around right. with me. Right. The government would know exactly what the student was up to. His or her background, source of money, jobs, foreign travel, even a change of major. The kind of information that might have stopped Iyad Ishmoel before he got into that truck. But the plan was never fully implemented. I can tell you exactly why it didn't get done. Special interests working with their senators and their members of Congress, pressuring the Immigration Service. I think there's plenty of responsibility to be shared for that. Marlene Johnson runs the National Association for Foreign Students and Advisors, a lobbying group for American colleges and universities. Foreign students are big business, bringing in 10 to 15 billion dollars per year. 
After the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center, new rules were proposed to keep tabs on foreign students in this country. Right. Your organization was opposed to that. Why? What we opposed was the notion that foreign students should be singled out <clears throat> because they are only two, less than 2%, really, of the non-immigrant temporary visa holders in this country every year. But in fact, the man who drove the truck into the World Trade Center was here on an expired student visa. Doesn't that say to you, we got to keep track of these guys? I don't think we know that. I think we do. This is a man that's in jail. Yes, well, I, I mean, there's no question that we have to keep track of people who are up to bad things. But critics say NAFSA helped derail the plan. Largely by opposing a $95 fee students would be required to pay to finance the tracking system. Sources also told 2020 that NAFSA's lobbying effectively gutted the plan. Gone were the provisions to monitor foreign travel, jobs, and financial background. Gone too was the ID card, which NAFSA and other lobbyists had opposed. A group of foreign students we gathered generally had no objection to the original strong regulations. But Charmaine Obed from Pakistan, a senior at Smith College, was adamant about the card. Why don't all Americans carry an ID card on them then? Why don't you show them? Well, I have to tell you this. They do when I'm here at ABC, I have to wear this all the time. So why shouldn't you have to wear something or carry something as a visitor to this country? Are you going to have tourists carry things on them? Tourists that come for three, four months? Are they going to be carrying it on them? Ahed Kamel came from Saudi Arabia to study at Parsons School of Design. She opposes the $95 fee. It's obscene. I mean, we pay obscene amounts of money to come here. Is $95 really cause you to go to London or to Paris instead of... No, but I pay them to get an education. I'm paying for my education. So why would I pay them to track me? There are going to be people sitting out there who are going to say, fine, go home. Don't come and enjoy our education system. What do you say to them? I say to them, I'm giving to this country as much as the country is giving me. It's a two-way road, as Marie said. We're learning things, you're learning things from us. There is a pilot tracking system in operation at 20 different schools. But congressional investigators last month called it a dumbed-down version of the original. Anything tougher, say the lobbyists, might keep foreigners away. We do not want to send a message to international students or prospective students that we are no longer welcoming you to the country. We don't want to do that. It is not in the best interests of the United States. Right now, with the new system that's going into place, are we safe? No, we're not any safer than we were yesterday or, not, or September the 10th. If that system were in place right now, the tough system, could the guy at O'Hare Airport have gotten through with his knives? No, he wouldn't have been here in the first place. If he failed to show up for his course of study, the INS would have come and got him. He wouldn't have had the document. He wouldn't have been able to stay in the country. He would have been deported. But INS says even if you can spot delinquent foreign students, you might not be able to deport them. Remember Omar from Bangladesh? He said, I've got a social security card. It's legal. I got a driver's license, I'm easily found. When my visa expired, nobody came and tried to find me. How do you explain that? We have 2,000, 2,000 special agents in the, employed with the, the INS. There is no way in this country for us to check up on every person who may overstay or violate a visa or who has come in without a visa. That's the reality. It is a reality that many believe should change in our post-September 11th world. In view of what's happened, can we really afford not to know who and where they all are? Better late than never, the U.S. Attorney General announced today that the government is overhauling the Immigration Service, including cracking down on students who overstayed their visas.